the blotting, we're going to start with a graded wash, which is basically having more pigment in one area and then stretching it so it looks like it fades. I'm doing this because I, I know that when I blot, I'll kind of want it to look like clouds and I want it to look like a sky. So a graded wash will work perfectly for that. As you can see that pigments at the top and just kind of fades. Now take your tissue or toilet paper and just press into the wet paper and hold it there just a few seconds and lift it up. And you can see that before the pigment gets to be absorbed we're just soaking it right back up. We're lifting it off. Another way you can remove watercolor off of the paper is with your brush. As long as your brush is clean, damp, it will almost act like a vacuum because watercolor brushes are thirsty or absorbent. They will just suck that water right up and you can remove any mistakes that way too. So I know a lot of times this is useful, especially when you're starting out, you need an eraser. Sometimes that's just comforting, knowing that it's there. Blotting and lifting. There's your erasers if you need it. Okay, now let's try some techniques out with our sponge. These are a couple that we did earlier. Just dragging the sponge, kind of hopping it along the paper and bouncing it. All of those are really fun. Make sure your sponge is damp, clean. We don't want it wringing wet. So if you squeeze it, it should not leave a puddle on your page. If it does, you've got too much water. Dip one corner into one color and another corner into another color. That just makes it more fun. You could use one color if you wanted. I like using blue and orange. It's one of my favorite combinations. So that's what I'm gonna go for. Get my blue in there, kind of press it. I've already activated my watercolors, which means in these little wells, the watercolor paint is already, has a little bit of moisture on it. It's not sticky. It's not fresh watercolor. It's been dried up but it, it's been re-wet today. So I'm just tapping it along the paper, making like a little trail. And now I'm gonna drag it, just press and kind of pull. Let's do one up here. A little burst of orange. Just nice little abstract showing what the sponge is capable of. That way when we go into our paintings and we need to do leaves or shrubbery or little patches of texture, we can do that. Next, we wanna know how to do layering and glazing. And we'll go ahead and put our tags on our book, just so it reminds you as you watch this that that's what we're doing. And some bruising, which sounds horrible, but it's fun. Um, bruising seems like it shouldn't be a good thing. It's not on your body, but it is in watercolor. It can be fun. For this example, we're going to do a flat wash, although you can do graded like this, and then layer it. So just a, a flat, even color, or a graded color, like this, like the blue, and have a fade. And we're gonna let that dry while we work on bruising. To bruise the paper, it does need to be kind of soggy and have a nice little glaze over it. So I'm gonna just add a little pigment to mine so you can see it on the video. So a nice sheen, a nice just watery surface, and look at that. I love wet on wet. It is so fun just to watch paint just like creep across. I'm gonna add a little burst of this kind of raspberry color. And then as it kind of soaks in, I'm gonna use the handle of my brush, my paintbrush, and I'm just going to write and press into the paper. What it does is it creates this channel for the pigment to gather like a ditch, like a river. And then within those channels, the pigment just kind of settles. 
which is wonderful when it's purposeful. If it's accidental, it's not as fun. So <laughs> we don't want it to be an accident. Now that our wash is dry, we can go ahead and put another layer on top of it. And you can layer this as many times as you want. If you want it to look like a plaid shirt, layering color is your best friend. And that's why it's so useful to know all these little techniques because they lend themselves to endless possibilities. And I hope you enjoyed seeing some examples of those. Hope you'll come back and subscribe and have a blessed day.